just from the very precise uh, perspective of the Department of Homeland Security, but uh, for a period, for the broader sense of the government in the United States. She's now uh, based in the Department of Homeland Security, and uh, she is, I'm afraid at times I have a difficulty keeping up with all the changes in the cyber area. <laughs> but uh, most of her work is designed uh, to address national cyber security incidents in the United States, to, prevent, to protect critical infrastructure, and to ensure the US government's ability to deliver key services and functions to US citizens, which is, of course, a very broad, a very broad agenda. I'm sure Janet, in the course of her few words to us, will tell us how she refines that down into a practical sense. A lot of you um, probably been involved in um, insecurity, um, whether that's cyber security or physical security, um, you know, the policy around that for probably a while. And, and so I don't think it's very surprising for any of you to you know, know that the think about critical infrastructure. Um, as being kind of key to um, both our national economy, your national economy, as well as uh, the ability to deliver critical services and functions to our citizens as being a, just a, a fundamental um, core role for, for any government to be able to protect and preserve that capability. And um, over, over the years, we've um, learned about um, how to protect and, and build more resilient infrastructure um, from uh, uh, protect them and build them up again quickly after natural disasters, um, after um, terrorist attacks, uh, and but increasingly we've had to think about it from a cyber perspective, um, which is far more complicated. As complicated as those are, um, this is, is, is tremendously more complicated. However, we do have the benefit of a lot of the work that was done um, and is still being done by our industry and, and state and local organizations to um, understand how to respond and recover from a natural disaster, how to harden their systems um, so that they can protect them from physical threats, um, thinking about emergency management um, across jurisdictional lines. All of those things are sort of have become core to our country over the past, you know, 20-ish years. And and so that's, so we sort of, we, we have that culture now mm -hmm. built up of understanding that, um, uh, the federal government doesn't uh, manage the majority of critical infrastructure. We do uh, manage uh, a lot of information about citizens. Um, we do manage a lot of work to protect our citizens from, from physical threats and, and cyber threats. And, um, and we also do deliver some critical services and functions. Um, and so we do have what I would consider critical infrastructure as well. And so, um, so what we've seen is on the on the critical infrastructure side, and in government networks and industry networks, um, it, taking advantage of you know the amazing potential that um, you know the cyber cyberspace offers us. Um, but what that has done is made it um, infinitely more compl complicated to defend it. And my organization is responsible for leading the national effort in the United States to uh, build a more safe and secure cyberspace. And I say national um, because for us it's not just about uh, the federal government. Uh, there's a lot of components of the federal government and we serve as a coordinator for all of those different uh, efforts. But I truly mean national and we've had to kind of mobilize industry from across multiple different sectors um, governments, uh, state and a local level, um, much of um, what is, is delivered is, is, and that is critical to our ability to continue our way of life is done at the local level um, in you know, hundreds of thousands of uh, small communities across the United States. And you know, so we can't just sort of sit in Washington and um, issue uh, dictates and, and tell everybody how this is going to be done. Um, even if they did have the resources to do it, they probably wouldn't anyway, um, just because federal government told them to. <laughs> and so we've we've really focused on you know, sort of this fundamental principle of needing to have a strong, trusted public-private partnership um, and public uh, between federal, state, and local governments, and and then the private sector, um, both those that are regulated and those that are not. And then we built an organization, which is mine, 
um, you know, a little over a decade ago that is not law enforcement, that's not intelligence, it's not a regulator. And, but what we do is we sit in the center of all of those and, um, and then we're given authorities to have protected conversations with industry and to share information back and forth with industry and, um, and be able to um, be their advocate um, within the government for information that they need, um, but also to um, be sort of on the front lines from the government to, to truly understand the business of those, those the, that industry, um, to understand um, what, why they're making certain risk management decisions, how we can better inform those risk management decisions using information that the government has access to that they may not be able to get elsewhere. And increasingly, and one of the reasons why I'm over here, is building a, a global cooperation and, and working with countries around the world, like Ireland, to um, uh, build similar capabilities. And um, you know, our, our, our national CERT sits within my organization, and um, we have um, we've we've built it quite a bit over the years. Um, we've built it both with resources, um, which is important, but equally important was building the authorities and the and the response responsibilities that come with that um, and, and the ability to um and, and frankly, the ability to have an industry that was is equally passionate and invested in this, and and them being able to organize themselves. Um, you know, I talk a lot about collaboration between us and industry. Um, we were talking about this earlier with some of the Irish critical infrastructure. Just as important is um, industry collaborating amongst themselves, breaking down their sort of natural competitive barriers. Um, you know. In a large country like the U.S. with a lot of companies um, that are competing for market space, that's not an insignificant challenge. Um, I think um, many uh, countries share similar challenges, um, but what I think has most heartened me is the um, the, the commitment. In, in a, they've, they've got to stay in business. They have to make money. I want them to do that. But they also understand um, their um, part in um, being a national asset for our country. And um, as as well as particularly for a lot of American companies being um, global entities that have an interest in preserving the, the global system that um, that is that we've all depended upon and and so sort of moving forward for us um, we um, you know we're, we're looking to kind of continue to increase that cooperation um, we you know we'd have uh, looking to help um, in, and continue to exchange information with other um, European partners um, Asian partners understand um, what they're seeing what they're learning we've uh, frankly we learn a tremendous amount uh, we we're talking a little bit earlier about WannaCry, um, which was a, a ransomware attack in, in May um, that started in Asia. And um, for hours, we were, um, there was nothing happening in the United States, but because I had partners in Asia and Europe that were passing us information. We had a head start, and um, and you know not everything's always going to start in Asia. Sometimes it's going to start in the U.S. So I hope we can return the favor. Um, but um, I think you know building that we 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 just we know that we cannot protect our homeland without having that global cooperation. And um, you know I just was appointed to this position in July, and this is already my third international trip. Um, and uh, you know the department is um, absolutely committed to not only. You know, becoming partners with other countries, but helping uh, other countries learn from uh, both the good things we've done and, frankly, the mistakes that we've made. <laughs> and, and please don't repeat those. And, um, and, and, and where we have been successful, to, to use those and, and apply them into your own internal structures as, as it makes sense. I'm just trying to position your organization mm -hmm. in the context of the US government and industry. You're not a regulatory mm -hmm. uh, body. What are you and how do you actually get your point of view across to industry and to the rest of government? Um, you know, well, we're not a regulatory body. Much of our critical infrastructure is already regulated. Um, they may not be regulated for cybersecurity, but they do have regulators in, you know, the U.S. system. I was familiar with the Irish system, but we have independent regulators mm. um, that are not a part of the kind of the 
your traditional executive branch. We do have some that are um, regulated within the executive branch. Um, so um, some of what we do, frankly, is uh, help them in, in regulators have conversations, to be honest, because we do see in the financial sector, and electric sector, chemical facilities, a few others, where regulators have taken um, steps to regulate cybersecurity. And, and so we're able to sometimes help, um, because I do think there is some value in, in regulations. Just, um, just because I'm not a regulatory agency doesn't mean I don't think that there's some value in there. But they have to be done smartly. And particularly for something like cybersecurity, um, it can't be done in a compliance check the box sort of way. And um, so that's some of it. But a lot of it is um, really over, you know, about, I want to say, 12, 15 ish years now, we've been kind of going down this road. So it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you know, it doesn't take others as long. Um, but, um, what we were able to do is, um, and it's actually started um, early in the, or it's actually started in the Clinton administration, it's been carried through, is this notion of having these voluntary public-private partnerships for critical infrastructure protection as being kind of foundational and having organization. And once DHS was established, we were established as that entity. And um, so what we do is um, we find where we can provide them value. And much of that is being able to understand what their business drivers are, um, how they make their risk decisions, what information is useful to them to inform their risk decisions, and then we work to get that information either through stuff that we have access to or stuff that our intelligence community or law enforcement has access to, and we turn that around and provide that to them. Um, over the years, um, as we've built more capability, um, you know, we're able now to, you know, I have teams, I have my own hackers um, that um, go and uh, actually um, try to get into um, both federal systems and uh, critical infrastructure. And we have a lot of critical infrastructure that voluntarily wants us to do that. That obviously takes a lot of, we, I, I have some of the most creative lawyers I think that I've ever seen. I love my lawyers. I love my lawyers. I think I might be the only person that ever says that. Um, um, they, um, they've, they've frankly trailblazed a new area, and, and, and frankly, cyber law is one of the emerging disciplines that is very fascinating, particularly international cyber law. I'm not a lawyer, but, um, but what, they, what they were able to do is, is work with industry entities and, and, and think about w how can we create a legal framework um, because, like I said, Congress gave us some really great authorities to protect information, to protect conversations. Um, but then what we needed to build was, like, mutually agreed upon legal frameworks. And so now, you know, after, you know, a dozen years, we've done thousands of uh, assessments, um, technical assessments with entities. And that now builds our understanding. Um, and, you know, one of the things I've, I've talked about a little bit is... Um, because we've created, and we've also created sort of an information handling, it's all unclassified, but um, it's, a, it's called traffic-like protocol. I don't know where that came from, but it's, um, you know, sort of, as you can imagine, white, green, amber, red. And um, it's widely adopted now in the international CERT community. Um, but what it does is it's, it's completely trust-based. There's, there's no enforcement. Um, um, but we've not had... Um, after a dozen years, we've had maybe one or two that have um, decided to, to leak it to the press. But what it allows us to do is share information, and if I label it as um, amber or red, I'm telling you, you cannot share it to the press, you cannot share it outside of your organization, and industry abides by that. And, and so that makes me then feel more comfortable, because I can share now draft things, things that I'm you know, not quite so sure about, I could, I could really use some industry input on, and we can, we can share products back and forth. And similarly, they can label a product um, as um, red, and I can't share it with another organization within the government. And um, and if an organization comes to me and says, I'd really like to know more about what happened with that entity, I go back to that entity and say, you know, look, the NSA or the FBI or somebody wants to have some more, they think that they might be able to add some value here. Um, most of the time, frankly, they say, fine, but let's, you know, remove certain pieces of the information that's not necessary. Um, so it's kind of years of, of being able to to, to have those protocols in place that are now becoming kind of international standards among um, the, the computer security incident response team community um, and, and, and abiding by it and, and on both sides because I'm opening myself up, frankly, when I'm giving them, um, them uh, these, these products and I'm trusting that they're not going to give it to the press um, and, uh, and, and they don't. And so um, I think 
it takes a lot of hard work. I have, um, you know, most of my most of my folks are, um, you know, either um, hackers or security engineers. Um, but I have um, a whole division whose sole job is um, customer engagement and managing relationships uh, and, and helping to understand and to translate what industry understands, how their business work, how they make those risk decisions back into our processes so we can sort of advocate on their behalf and then provide something of value. Because if we're not providing anything of value, the fact is that we could have all the trust in the world, but they're not going to be particularly interested in working with me. Um, unless I am a regulator, then they have to. But, um, but yeah, that's sort of a um, variety of things that we've done to, to try to build that community. And it's not perfect, I'll be honest. You have to sometimes have some hard conversations, um, but we've had them, and um, you know, sometimes you agree to disagree.